it's a common requirement to want to move development workloads from on-premise to the cloud. In this demo, we'll take a look at how we can take a development workload on-premise and move it to a Jenkins server running on vCloud Air. Let's look at the top-level process. First, the developer checks code in the GitHub. GitHub notifies the Jenkins server that changes have been made to the repository. Jenkins checks out the latest code and saves it on the local server. At this point, any build or code checking could be done. Jenkins calls a CLI to create a new VM from the cloud catalog. This could be a catalog entry from your cloud catalog or an on-premise image. Jenkins also uses a CLI to configure an internet access for the VM. Jenkins then calls Ansible to configure the new VM with app dependencies, like for example Node.js, and then Jenkins deploys the app to the test server. The final step is that Jenkins calls Selenium to perform web UI tests. If those tests are invalid or fail, then an email can be sent to the dev team. Otherwise, the application is released for all developers. Let's go run this process in real time and see the results. Okay, for our demo, we're going to use a simple word finder app, which is available on GitHub. It has a data dictionary of hundreds of thousands of English words, and we can search for words using prefixes and suffixes and wildcards. So we can search for CLOU words or ST words and get a list. So just a fun little app, it's a Node.js application. It's maintained on um, GitHub in a public uh, repository. And this repository is configured to call Jenkins whenever there are changes made to the Jenkins project. Over here, we can see our Jenkins project. This is running on vCloud Air. We can see there's various steps to the Jenkins project. So this job consists of the first step is we call uh, the Jenkins repository. So we have a URL for that. And we have a checkbox that says build this project when a change is pushed to GitHub. Then the next step is we have a dependent job that goes out and builds a Ubuntu server to host the application when, since a new build is being created. And finally, we have a shell script that does several key things. So for example, it calls Ansible to go out and provision the new server, the stock Ubuntu server, it moves the application, it restarts the application, runs Selenium tests, and releases the URL to developers. So those are the different steps. So now let's go make a change to our GitHub project and watch the whole process run. So for our change, we'll just make a simple modification to the main page, something that we can detect easily when we load the app. So we'll go to the main header on the page and we'll change that from new improved word finder to classic word finder anything we can see to indicate the new build. All right, so now let's go down and commit these changes. And almost immediately, we'll see a new job pop up, new build pop up in Jenkins. So the trigger's been sent by GitHub. And after a predefined wait period, just to stop race conditions on builds, the build will start. We'll take a look at the console and watch the build run. So the first thing the build does is call that dependent Ubuntu job we look at that, we see that it's going out to connect to vCloud Air using the VCA CLI and connect to my virtual data center. Then it's checking to see if the vApp already exists. And since it doesn't, it's going to create a new one. So it's creating an Ubuntu virtual machine based on the Ubuntu 12.04 long-term support image. That image could be on vCloud Air or it could be an image that was replicated over from our on-premise catalog through the cloud connector. The next thing it does is it connects the vApp to the VDC network. And the next thing we're going to do is customize that VM before we start it. So here we run a script that adds SSH keys to the VM so that Jenkins can do an SSH login without passwords. We do other things like configure DNS and host name and a few other things. So now we deploy and start the vApp, so it's booting Ubuntu. And our script at this point just circles for a few seconds to wait for that Ubuntu image to boot. So every few seconds we check uh, VCA CLI and ask for the IP associated with our new VM. 
and the script will eventually pick up the IP and go back and carry on with the rest of the word finder deploy. All right, so there it found it. 109.108 on the uh, internal network. So now let's go back and look at the top level project, which was our word finder project. So now that that's done, we've called Ansible. And Ansible is provisioning the necessary dependencies on the Ubuntu server. So we're doing things like installing Node.js and any of the dependent packages that our app depends on. Now that's that that's done, we're using rsync to push the application over. So the full app's been pushed, and now we're going to restart the app and run Selenium tests. So now the tests have finished. So our build was successful. The UI is available to developers, and we can see that it's changed the classic word finder. Our changes are available. That's it for our demo. Thanks for watching.